Oops. Uh, yeah, there's seven, 17 okay, yeah. questions. Do you want to answer all of these? All of them. All of them. Mm, why, all of them in once? We should save some of them for another time. We should only do like half of those tonight. No. We can do all of them. No, no. The idea is we want more questions asked. So we're answering all of them. There's 100 questions here. We're going to answer all 100. Obviously, it's going to keep it shorter. Um, yeah. until, until it gets completely overwhelming with like more patrons, we're going to, we're going to do all of them. We have to do all of them. Sure. Otherwise, why, otherwise, why ask them if they're not going to be answered? This is very true. And I think this first one should be open. So more people can like see it and see what we're trying to do. Right. We can do that. We can see it. Ask, see it like the old way. Can we release this on the feed? Ooh. We can you do know, that and the logo for War Room is sick. And we already have an Axe of Kings, um... Logo. Logo. So actually, fuck it. We'll just do it. We'll just do it and not tell them. And we'll be like, hey, what's what we're doing. <laughs> we'll do it after the fact. We'll like, oh, it's sometimes, sometimes better ask forgiveness and permission. Yeah. All right. I feel you. Like, I don't, think, I don't think Bones and them did their, you know, offshoot shows and fucking told them. <sighs> they just fucking did it. Just fucking did it. All right. I'm down. Uh, okay. Uh, so, Ricky, um, hang on. So, we got to be recording. Let me go off my phone. Yeah, me. I'm recording. Um, I am not, Jed. I gotta create my wave. Yeah, I do too. Hang on. Okay, change the settings. It's Axe the King's first episode. Yeah, huh? <laughs> Here we go. File, new, audio oh, no, file. Axe, February. Yeah. Uh, I did AX. AX Feb. That's what I'm naming this. AX Feb. A A no, AX Feb. AX is capitalized. <laughs> Avenge but February fold. Yep. Yeah. All right, I'm recording. I am also recording. All right. Three, two, one. Then, Ricky, just bring it in whenever you're ready. <laughs> there's there's a lot of fucking chatter going on over there. It's like she's eating a taco like or something. Chewing. Yeah, right? Fucking crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is King Ricky Rose today, and welcome all of you Patreon members to our first ever um, monthly special for Ask the Kings, where you guys of our Patreon have uh, chosen to... <laughs> to... Sorry, Kate Murphy is saying something in the Patreon chat actually right now, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, is it you about got... her ovaries? No, she's talking about how Thank perfect the week has been. It might be about her ovaries. Anywho, where you guys in the Patreon have decided to ask us any question that your heart so desires, whether it be wrestling related or personal related, we are an open book here at Kings of the Rings podcast. And so let's get it started. We have a lot of questions that we need to answer, all three of us, unless otherwise specified. So let's go with a good one coming from Wade, hashtag Wade Cares, um, one of our top two. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, gonna make, I'm gonna make Wade cares a thing before, <clears throat> before it's all said and done. So Wade goes, who are your top five favorite women wrestlers currently? That's a hard one because I don't know if I can name five. I can name um, five. so obviously Becky Lynch, duh. Um, I really like what Ronda's doing. Her year has inc inc impressed me incredibly. Um, I'll throw Sarah Logan in there because I love Sarah Logan. I just think she's hot. Of course. Um, definitely, uh, what's her name? Nikki Cross. Bella? Cross. Oh. Cross. <laughs> and the fifth one. I'll say Shayna Baszler. You do like Shayna. She, I mean, I, okay, I love Shayna's character. I hate her wrestling. Fair. I'm going to go with, um, in no particular order, obviously, Becky Lynch, uh, Sasha Banks, because I think she's still fucking valuable. Um, uh, Tony Storm. Uh, Nikki Cross. And, uh, oh, Mercedes Martinez, because she's fucking dope. She is fucking dope. I'm also going to throw honorable mention Lacey Evans to piss Dave off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Miss it. I don't want to the Sienna, uh, Allison K, a.k.a. Sienna the Savage, because she's dope as fuck. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to say Asuka, um, Kyrie, EO, Tony, and... Um, Note to self, look at the questions beforehand. 
No, and, and, <laughs> and I'm going to actually uh, go outside of WWE and be a Priestley. William Ospreay's girlfriend. Oh. Who no, Becky? Just no, not... Becky? You don't like Becky? No, Becky. Uh, it, 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 it's not that I don't like Becky. It's just I think I it's too think obvious. It's too obvious, but also uh, I like that these other characters are getting over uh, in ring. And they didn't need this perfect storyline to like for it to happen. That sounds like shade, there, Dave. No, no, no I, no, I think no, I think no. that's a very valid point. That's actually that's fair, because you know, I mean, Becky, it kind of fell in her lap, and it's a very organic storyline. But you can just argue that you know what, she got lucky. Uh, the women Dave mentioned. I'd say maybe the exception like, of Io Shirai, she's really impressed me that much, have earned their spot well, but, but as I one mean, of the top tier. Except that last you, person I also didn't hear you, about. You, you, all, you also have to factor in, like, I've I've seen Kyrie, Io, I've seen all of these women on their independent platform, so I knew who they were, who they are coming into WWE and with Bia coming into um AEW, so like I, I've, mm -hmm. I, they're all very talented, and I mean, like the Bia Priestley was just announced the other day, um, with AEW, and that like they've all, she's the fourth person they've announced other than um, uh, Britt Baker, um, Nyla Rose. Uh, who's the first um, transgender wrestler, and Kylie Ray, who comes out to the Pokemon team. All right, let's move along, because we do have a lot of questions to answer. Uh, again, hashtag Wade Cares goes, um, will John Cena break the record when and against who, if yes? Well, he... obviously, yes, because Vince McMahon has come out and said he's the greatest of all time. Um, I think at this point he has to. Why have it tied? Um, I think it's also going to be when Ric Flair is alive, hopefully. Let's hope. Um, and I think against who? Well, the question, if you want a mega storyline, this might be an unpopular opinion um, because of two competitors, but who else is chasing John Cena? And who else is kind of uh, predicted in, in like wrestling lore right now to win another belt? That's Randy, Randy Orton. I was going to say Randy. Randy Orton, I think, is a four, 13 or 14 time. I think he's 13. I think he's 13. I think Triple H is 14 14. or 15. Right. Triple H is 14, Randy's 13. So another John Cena Randy Orton feud is seems so unappealing to everybody always <laughs> forever. But if it's for Flair's record, I think that will be a new added stigma that'll get people interested. At least for me personally. Uh this is a very good question from hashtag Wade Cares. Yeah, thank you, hashtag Wade Cares. I, I Cena is gonna break the record, unfortunately. Um and I mean, he's 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 done long enough. I mean, it's also if you really want to think about it and be technical, sixteen world championships are the sixteen world championships that WWE recognizes. There's actually a ton more, but Flair won. Everyone knows it's like twenty one. Yeah, <laughs> he's like five. He actually won, um, but they don't recognize. But which I think, which I think gives more credence for Cena to break it because who cares? We all know Flair's the best, but let's Cena yeah. like Cena earns it. You can't say Cena hasn't earned to break the record. I, I no, I can't really argue against Cena you know, breaking the record. Um, I think if you're gonna do it on somebody, you gotta do it on somebody where it seems like it's impossible. And I think this would be great, especially if this would be his swan song, and then Cena's, you know, obviously rise to the top as one of the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. He's gotta beat Brock Lesnar. Ooh. He's got to be Brock. The last time Cena was relevant as champ is when they had just started forming the World Heavyweight Championship and Brock squashed the absolute shit out of him. Damn, dude. I wouldn't mind seeing that either. Dave, what do you think? Uh, definitely breaking the record. Um, to who? That's a tough question because you have to fact, uh, take into consideration how much longer Cena is really going to be doing this part-time thing. Um, he is, uh, as we've seen, going more and more Hollywood, and I'm not taking a strike on that. He, it's just he's focusing on movies and TV shows and all that. Um, and the current state of the WWE, uh, part of me would almost like to see him do it against Daniel Bryan, but uh, mm. with, the, with the way... Uh, 
recent events have transpired, I don't see that being a viable option. So I, I'm also going to uh, go on the raw end of it, but I would like to see him uh, do it with the universal title from Seth Rollins. Interesting. They have a backstory there. Yeah, yeah. like uh, they have a backstory, and the match would just be awesome. You would I find no, interesting? No, John Stewart. Jo- fuck you. You would I find? You would I find interesting? <laughs> I is love that, that all? All three of us have said people Cena has feuded with a lot in the past. So it's something we want to see again, which I think even says more to people like Seth Rollins, like Randy and Brock, as much as it does Cena. Unless I think the best match you would get out of any of them is. Pro- of, of he is going to break the record, you'd have to give AJ Styles another run. Him and AJ were magic. Yeah. But, it's, but you know, the thing is, AJ isn't a naturally born WWE guy. Also, AJ is the one he and... beat to tie the record, so do you really want to do it again? <clears throat> it just see the three matches. I, I watched him a few times. Yeah. So I was there in person for SummerSlam with Dave. Dave saw me. So is the person for something to Dave. Dave saw me. Dave saw me Hulk out real quick when AJ won. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> yep. one of the best moments ever. Uh, right. Next it, question. It, it for real happened. Yeah. Um. So next question comes from hashtag Mr. Freds, who actually gave us a non WWE right. question, a non wrestling question. I love these questions. These are better. He goes, "Who out of your followers do you want to meet the most? Besides me, obviously." LLJK. Um, well, this is also a kind of tough one because I don't like to choose. It's like choosing fans, like pick between your kids. I mean, it's not, but it is. Um, <laughs> but a lot of them I've already met. I've met Danny. I've met Nikki. I've met all of the Valkyrie. Hate, hate uh, members. Oh, they can go fuck themselves then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, what okay. are your followers? Followers. I mean, so that's everybody. That so it's everybody. tough because I've met most of them. But the answer that could obviously show how how few followers you truly have. Well, well, fuck let, you, Dave. Let's, actually, let's go with Patreon people because I think I thought he meant Patreon people. Well, no, we have to answer his question. Um, but one of them is ha- it happens to be a Patreon, and also I'm meeting Nate at WrestleMania, so I can, I don't like I'm, I don't need to want to meet him. I'm going to. The answer is Mr. Fretz. <laughs> I'll do. I'll never forget that first episode when you Mr. Fretz was on, on the Mr. live Fretz. stream. I thought he was a science teacher. I remember. <laughs> yes. I oh have my God. Show. I still, I still remember when we would see Mr. Fretz and you would, oh my, that was perfect. Mr. Fretz is, a, is and always will be a science teacher. We love you, Mr. Fretz. Like everyone, everyone remembers their first fan, but only I will remember my first Mr. Fretz. That's true. Uh, who do I want to meet the most? I, like you said, I've met a bunch of people um, already. Which is kind of crazy, but if I, I'm, I'm looking into the Patreon, actually. I met Kate Murphy. Kate Murphy's on fire these days. Shout out to Kate Murphy. Um, Kate Murphy. We love you, B. Yeah, she, like, runs the chat these days. Uh, oh, Correct actually, her, her ovaries run the chat. The ovaries, <coughs> ovaries in general run the chat at this point in time. Um, I've met Wade. Uh, met Wade before he was a Patreon member. Um, I'm gonna go with Rachel Moon, our newest one. She's actually um gotten out of her shell a little yeah, bit more. Hundred percent. And it was her birthday. Happy belated birthday, by the way, Rachel Moon. Wait, so are we going in within the Patreon, or are we going followers in general? Followers Anybody, in general. followers Anybody. in general. Uh, yeah. Um, do you want to like? It, <sighs> It's hard because, like, within within the Patreon, um, Ra- I would have to agree with you with Rachel. Like, uh, it was awesome ce- celebrating her birthday in the chat, and I do hope to one day meet her. But, like, outside the Patreon, um, obviously I've made it public uh, to you guys and to the followers and the listeners that I'm going to be going to uh, Double or Nothing. And um, uh, one of my followers, Amy O., uh, she has, she's made me look forward to this, not just for what we're going to get in the ring, but just like the people outside the ring, like along with, um, the StarCast event. And, uh, I, I just really want to meet her be and like, it, it's just awesome. Like, but before I even thought, 
considered going to double or nothing like we were interacting about um new japan and it, it it's always few and far between when you can find someone to interact about all these events at all these crazy times all the meanwhile promoting a uh a safe space for you know everyone of different creeds colors gender identities I think that's a really big deal, especially in wrestling. Um, not just wrestling uh, Twitter, but Twitter in general. All right. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Safe space, Dave. I love it. Um, Next question. Just, also, Mr. Fretz. Also, Mr. Fretz. And he says, uh, your top five best or worst wrestling video games. All right. I can't answer this one because I don't, I don't think I've played five. I've played, I've, well, I've played actually, five. I have played. I have played five, but they're all relatively the same game. So, Ricky, you can go first this time. I'll, I'll go with this one. Um, WWE 2K19 is like. A... 2K19 is the best, probably, of the 2Ks, minus you know the showcase modes and shit like that. But WWE 2K with Stone Cold, where you re- where you relive the entire Attitude Era, I thought was phenomenal. Um, you also have uh, probably. Arguably the greatest wrestling video game of all time, uh, WWF No Mercy for yep. the N64. Talk about a flawless wrestling experience. Also, yes. w- WCW versus NWO Revenge was iconic for its time. And then um, I'll say I won't. I don't want to. I don't want to pick a particular one in the series, but the uh, the SmackDown PlayStation video game series was great. Not SmackDown versus Raw, just the original SmackDown series. Like know your role. Yes. Um, bring the pain. All that stuff. Yeah. They they brought a different type of realism, especially with um storyline arcs and GM modes and stuff like that. I thought those were fantastic series of games, even though I was never a PlayStation fan. Yeah. Um all right. For for me, uh even though um Obviously, compared to <clears throat> the current gen of uh, wrestling games, it it's hard to compare. But WWF No Mercy, like I still remember playing through that with my brother, like getting the uh, unlockable characters. Um, next, I'm actually going to also take from your list uh, WCW NWO Revenge. So uh, good, ju- so good. Just get just getting a chance to play with like people in NWO was sick. Like. Um, now for my next one, I'm actually going outside the WWE realm and it's okay. going to be uh fire pro. I've heard a lot of good things about that. And, and it, it's the graphics are like, it, it, it's, it's an arcade wrestling game, but with a modern wrestling, um, move set and just like being able to play with Kenny Omega, and you know all the big guys in New Japan, and even outside New Japan, like it's not just limited. It, there's a very large roster. Have to go with that. Um, then I'll go with 2K19 strictly because I haven't played it. I'm so so. How can, you, how can you say? How can you put that in your top five well, best or worst? Re, re, to, I'm putting it in top is right now just for all the uh, added on stuff with the Woo edition. The Woo edition is fantastic. And uh, I, number I, yes, it's like saying number, she's the best guy I ever slept with, but I never fucked her. Yeah, and, and, and number five, I'll <laughs> go with uh, two with two K eighteen because of the uh, it was a great game to play through, and also the um Johnson edition. Yeah, it's seen enough. Okay, let me let me tell you guys something. Let me tell you something, brothers. Um, the best game wrestling game of all time is SmackDown vs Raw two thousand eight. That's what got me into wrestling, always and forever. Um, probably one of the worst is SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what made me stop playing wrestling video games for a while. And then I forget which one it was, but I think it was 13 or 14. It was when it went to 2K. And it was the show, it was like one of the first showcase modes. You play as like CM Punk, uh, beating John Cena. Who was on the cover of that one? Was it Austin? No, Austin was the Attitude Era. It was, it was the one before Austin then. It was that game. Who was on the cover of that? I think Cena. I might have. It actually might have been Punk. Punk was strong, I believe. One. I didn't buy that one. So I, it was thirteen. So I'm going with thirteen, then fourteen with Austin. Um, SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. That's where I learned who Chris Benoit was. Also, shout out to WWE Champions, the mobile game. <laughs> Bejeweled, but wrestling. Wow. 
Dude, you love that game. The countless hours I have played on that game is ridiculous. And they put so many microtransactions and ads in. I stopped playing it, but I haven't deleted it. I'm going to go back one day, I promise. Yeah. Next question. Moving along. Uh, Mr. Fretz again with, an, with a personal question. He goes, what do you like to do when, when not podcasting? What are your hobbies? Oof. Well, I beat um, Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, so let, so let, me, need, let, let, me, let me go into that for a second. You need um, a new hobby. Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts 3 was a very good game with a very satisfying ending, a lot of bullshit in the middle, and it's kind of like an incomplete story. But I enjoyed it overall. So my, clearly my passion, other than um, podcasting, is I love to play video games. Um, anything with stories. I love movies. I watch a lot of TV. God, I sound really pathetic right now. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you do. Um, but, like, you know, I like hanging out with the boys. Saturdays are for the boys, going drinking. Um, but other, hobbies, it's really just anything with a story. I like to read. I like movies. I like TV. I like video games. I like to write. Um, I like to drink. <laughs> um, for me, uh, I've I've shown uh, like um views of my room. Like I'm a big Funko Pop collector. Um, I also uh, happen to have um eight championship belts so i'm also big on those and, I, those and I also be here uh no uh they're still downstairs i'm actually taking them out for my um around the rings this week uh neither here nor there um i also go to uh, a lot of um uh concerts and music festivals uh i'm gonna be making my return to europe uh this summer for tomorrowland all while uh checking out czech republic germany Amsterdam and Ibiza before and after um, and uh, finishing school because yeah. I mean, I'm, fi- I'm finally getting that degree, guys. About time. Uh, one of my biggest hobbies when I whenever I get to it, because I don't usually get to it at all, is sleep. Uh, <laughs> sleep. <laughs> sleep is awesome when you can get it. Usually I don't uh, because I'm doing my other hobbies like uh, getting paid the party. Yeah, fuck you, by the way. It's it's all right. Not many people can live a lavish lifestyle like I do, so uh, I get I I do work. I do moonlight as an MC on the weekends for a bar, uh, for a pretty great bar, and we're doing even bigger and better things. And I have a more um, involved role moving forward um, with that as well. So my time is even going to be more of the essence. Besides that, uh, I do like video games. I'm a big sports video game person. I do obviously enjoy podcasting, obviously not for wrestling, but about, for about other shit as well. Um, and I do write on the side as well. I've been writing, I've been having a blog for like five, six years now. It's an uh, awesome blog. It's an awesome blog. Well, I forgot to send you my shit because I know we talked about it last week. Yeah, no, it's all right. I forgot yeah. to text you about it too. Yeah, it's it's all good. But yeah, I, I do like to write. Apparently, people think I'm a good writer, which surprised me when I started doing it. And I think that's why I kept on doing it. I'm actually planning on dropping some stuff uh, either today or, or well this weekend. Drop some drop some revealing shit this weekend. It's going to be great. Have a concept in mind for it all. Uh, all right. And that's, a big on super not... oh. big superhero movie first. Superhero movie. It's whatever. Black Panther got nominated. It also won a few. It did. It won three. It just not the important ones. It's all right. Doesn't matter. It, it shouldn't have won the important one anyway. Um, so Kyle White asks, what non-wrestling thing are you looking forward to the most this year? Oh, that's hard. Um, <laughs> that is Wait. actually really hard. Because I honestly, I'm not planning too far ahead this year. I'm kind of, I'm <laughs> living, I'm literally living life one week at a time, one month at a time. So that being said, how much the you most, can afford. No, well, not even that. It's just like, what's the point of looking towards a summer vacation if I don't have a, if I don't have a job? Like, my yeah. most thing I'm looking forward to this year is finally getting that new full-time job that I can quit the bar. Because you don't set the bar. I am the bar. Um, so, oh. yeah, most thing I'm looking forward to is getting that, like, email saying, congratulations, you're hired. Um, for me, uh, it's definitely um, going back to Tomorrowland and doing Discover Europe. Uh, obviously, I wasn't able to do uh, any traveling last year, uh, except going through the courts because I was in my uh, treatment program and, uh, you know, in the 
in court to get my tr uh, possession charge dropped and uh, knock on wood, got that done. So it's going to be nice to travel and uh, see some uh, friends. And actually, uh, a pair of my friends from Tomorrowland are actually getting married there this year. That's pretty dope. Uh, I'm looking forward to, obviously not a lighter schedule. Uh, I'm looking forward to, <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's fucking blows. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, just kidding. All right, B. Um, looking forward to having more of an enhanced role in this, in this nightlife scene. Uh, spoiler alert, in, in like a week from the time this gets released, I'm working with DJ Scribble, which is like fucking amazing. If anybody knows who DJ Scribble is. from Will MTV. doesn't. Well, Will's also like a two-year-old. So so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to enhanced roles and in, in meeting, in meeting people and getting to work with a bunch of different people. The King Ricky Rosé moniker did not develop from the podcast. It developed from a nightlife giving, and it's just going to be more and more enhanced as the time goes along. Ricky, how many colors do you have of your own shirt? Uh, I think I almost have every color. <laughs> nice. That's respect right there. You got to be the brand. All right, so Nate asks, probably... This is a new like, question. We, we, we could talk about this for the rest of the show and skip regular KOTR. We could probably talk about this forever. So what movie or franchise deserves a reboot? And the answer is simple. Look who our president is. Look at our political system. The answer is Team America World Police 2. <laughs> that would be so amazing. That would be really uh, good. Um... A full scale reboot because oh, oh man, I don't know. All right, Ricky, this dead air is killing me. Fantastic Four, another one. It need no, it needs to be a reboot. <laughs> in, uh, in another Fox. one. They already tried that. <laughs> we have we have three different renditions of Spider Man. Okay. Yeah, and all of, well, two of them are good. No, the the Marvel one is fine. Marvel needs to redo. Fantastic Four and do it the fucking right way. Mm. I'm going to say no on that one. I'm going to say yes on that one. Oh. Well, first of all, they tried making Johnny Flash black. Is that a problem? Johnny Storm. No, it's not a problem, but it's just like, why? Why not? So, so it's, a, it's a problem to you. Yeah. Um, God, I'm still... Po say Pokemon or something. Well, we're getting to take the Pikachu. Yo, and I'm actually mad excited to see that. I'm dope um, to see that. <sighs> well, just put a bump. Just put the uh, Jeopardy uh, bumper in here. Dave, read the questions next no, time. Okay, damn it. Okay. <laughs> no, um, it would be nice to have. Never mind. Hellboy, but with Ron Perlman. What? They're, re they're, they're rebooting Hellboy with a different actor to play Hellboy. Uh, I'm sorry. When I think of Hellboy, I think of Ron Perlman. I and think Zoolander needs a reboot, too, but that's just me. I'm going to so, say yeah. All in the Family. TV show from mm -hmm. the 70s. Family Matters. Oh, you can't even play Archie Bunker, so uh, maybe not. Um... Bring Digimon back. Digimon was a great show. Yeah, okay. Uh, right, let's, this, let's move on. This is also a great question for Mr. Fretz. Um, no, first, what are you talking about? You have, still, King, you have a couple more from Nate. No, King's Wings podcast was me commenting at C hash C dash Mr. Fretz. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that, that's one thing he asked in the, in the Twitter chat, so I put it in there. Um, right. So first, wrestling memories of each of us. I want to know Dave's first. Wait, wait, like being there live or just wrestling your, in general? Your first wrestling memory. Um, you need to find memory. <laughs> I'm trying to think of... All right, Rick, you uh, go first. For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, oh, wait, wait, no, I, I got it, I got it. Triple H locking mankind... Uh, Cactus Jack in a like small uh, cage like the one that they use for to keep the teams in in war games shark and cage. leaving yeah shark cage and leaving Raw with the uh, chain behind the DX Express. I remember that. So my first memory was a Raw I went to. This is uh my dad took me to a Monday Night Raw. This is back when they taped Raw. Wow. So, yeah, I was back then, um, and I just remember it was like the end of a show. 
and Stone Cold gave a stunner to the Stooges um, on oh, Briscoe on, and Patterson at the top of, at the top of a stage, and that's how like the, that's how like the night ended. It was fucking great. The place was going insane. That's like my first real memory. Uh, like I I remember turning on my TV at the time and stumbling onto Raw. But I don't remember like what match it was. But this is like my first actual vivid memory is going to that Raw with my dad, who probably had no reason bringing me at like eight years old to a Monday Night Raw, but but we went. I I can kind of yeah. went up that age because I will. This isn't this doesn't technically count. But I'm gonna tell it anyway. I remember once I was like four, five, maybe six years old, and my uncle had tickets to wrestling, and mm-hmm. he asked if I wanted to go. And I was like, Do you want to go? Now, it's just like, I could have done that, or I could have rode bikes with my neighbors. I chose to rode bikes with my neighbors. Uh, so, so that could have been my first wrestling memory. My actual first wrestling memory is a few years later, in second grade, I was sleeping over Dan Fontes' house. This was on a Friday, so he was huge in wrestling in second grade. So we watched SmackDown. Um, nice. And I don't remember much, but I remember King Booker was there. I remember Rey Mysterio, and I remember Mark Henry. Nice. So wow. it's it's kind of weird because I was watching this in second grade, going, "This is stupid. You know, this is fake." And then six years later, I no eight, uh, yeah, about six years later, wrestling fan from playing video games. So that's my very first wrestling memory. Fucking Dan nice. Fontes's house, second grade. All right, let's move along. So next question comes from Nate the effing great again, and he says, "Who would you, who would you join the Hall of Fame with DX this year, or who would join the Hall of Fame with DX this year?" Who's joining DX in the Hall of Fame? We already know it's Hockey Talk, man. Is there anybody else that we feel should join DX in the Hall of Fame? Bam, bam. That'd be good. He's from Jersey, Asbury Park. He'd be a posthumous induction. Uh, Vader. I can see Vader. I'm surprised he's not in, but that makes sense he's not in yet. Um, um, Vader. Bulldogs. The British Bulldogs. The British Bulldogs. Owen Hart. We're thinking of dead people now. <laughs> who, who, who currently like that's not wrestling anymore? The Rock, um, the Rock, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. The Rock would have been announced by now. I think he would have been the headliner. Uh, I, I would also. Oh, Christian. Uh, yeah. I think at this point, him being out is part of his gimmick. So give it a few years to ride it out. Yeah. Um, it's, part, it's part of the Edge and Christian show. I, I'm trying I to think, think of a celebrity. I, Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper should be in. Um, I think uh, isn't what is William Shatner in yet? Yeah, oh, I think Bob he's Barker. In. Yes, <laughs> Bob uh, Barker or uh, uh, Betty White. I, I will. I would like to see uh, Victoria in as the female contingent. I'd love to um, see Gail Kim in. Yeah, uh, Gail Kim's not going to be in anytime soon. I know Molly Holly maybe as well. She's been um, back. She's been around the system. Oh, Vicky Guerrero. Absolutely. Vicky would be fantastic. She'd give a hell of a speech, too. She would. Uh, yeah, so... I think we kind of hit it on the head right there. Okay, so this next one from Nate is kind of hard. I don't know what he was going with this. And he goes, preferred name for the women's wrestlers. Create your own... So divas and knockouts are off the table. So what would you call the women's division? You can't call them divas and knockouts or just the women. Um, the bitches, the bitches, the bitches. <laughs> no, let's not call them bitches. The bitch um, division. <laughs> female superstars. They gotta be creative, Dave. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, you can't really. It's hard because like we don't have a we don't have a creative name for the males. Well, yeah, 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 the X division, the yeah, that division. Was for, that's for specific weight classes. He's saying name the entire gender of female wrestlers, mm. which we have, which has been done tons of times, but it just seems so awkward to do now. It, it would be. It's, it's this is an interesting question, there, Nate. No, you want to what the glorious ladies of wrestling? Oh, glow! See what I did there. The glow division. Yeah, this is one I I couldn't think of an answer for. I should have thought about this more. Um, I mean, Ring of Honor does it well because they have the Women of Honor, and that just that worked out. It does work. But for like, 
I don't know. You could bring back the ladies' division. Call mm. them ladies. Yeah, I wouldn't that, do it. That's my answer. Who's ladies that division going to be occupied by Lacey Evans, and that's it? Yeah, yep. she'll be on. She'll be undefeated for years. It'll be God great. Here. It's okay, Dave. It's all right. Trish Stratus got to start the same way. Moving along. Um, so, Mr. Fred said, "Oh, Mr. Fred put it in there." Yeah, well, I didn't see that. Favorite yeah, sports fi- to watch besides wrestling. Yeah, favorite sports to watch besides wrestling by Mr. Fretz. Baseball. Football. Football and basketball. Uh, all right, next one. Favorite wrestling games, even though we kind of already answered that. that. One. Uh, Mr. Fretz, again, what is your best celebrity encounter? And it doesn't have to be a wrestler. Derek Jeter uh, once, like, blew his nose at me and, like, waved at me. When uh, I went no, wait, to... seriously? Um, mm-hmm. That's cool. Uh, when I went to the uh, Roger Waters concert um, last year with my dad, he got us tickets in the second row, and afterwards uh, he came off stage and he was shaking fans with hands, and he uh, shook my hand and gave me a fist bump and then gave me some confetti that dropped down from the uh, political pig. Nice, Roger okay. Waters was the lead, lead singer of Pink Floyd, for those of you who don't know, Will. And now we know. Thank you. I didn't know as well either because I don't listen to Pink Floyd. Um, so for me, uh, seeing that somebody who works at a bar and we randomly get celebrities, I can pick a lot of people. I can tell you my Finn story, or I can tell you like another, another well-known celebrity story of people that I've met. So pick your poison guys. Do you want the Finn story or you want like another celebrity story? No, another <coughs> celebrity. I've heard the Finn story. That could be <clears> saved. <throat> yeah, I was just about to say that. That can be a question for Mr. Fretz next month. What's the Finn story? Yep. The <laughs> Finn story is pretty cool. <laughs> Um, but actually, so at the bar we had, can you stop sneezing? Sorry. <laughs> um, so we, uh, for, so for a bar a couple years ago, the Mayweather McGregor fight was a huge deal, obviously. Well, and yeah, so me and, my, me and my roommate actually, uh, were there. The yeah. roommate I currently live with. Yeah. So we, uh, so we sold out Mayweather McGregor and then we also had a special guest. We had a couple of special guests. One of them was uh, UFC fighter Eddie Truck Gordon, who fights locally. Out oh, of, yeah. Uh, he, he, out didn't, of he sit, didn't he sit in the VIP section? Yes, he did. And then also with us as well to help us run the party and MC the parties, I got to hang out with Lisa Ann for a night. Oh, my God. I still have that picture. I was in a fucking arm sling that night. And let me tell you how amazing it was to hang out with Lisa Ann. She is one of the nicest people in the world she's stunning absolutely stunning and a uh, little known fact we are actually friends on all social media nice yeah yo and like literally it was pretty dope because like she looks amazing in person but then you also know what she looks like naked so yeah well she lost a lot of weight from yeah yeah she did so I'm, also... I'm gonna change mine to styles p <laughs> i'm sorry that you met Styles P. <laughs> no, Styles, Styles P was actually really cool. We did an interview with him for work. He looks like a Ninja um, Turtle. He does look like a Ninja Turtle. And, like, before his interview, he's like, yo, I'll be right back. He went and smoked a joint in his car. Yeah. So I have a, it's a funny Lisa Ann story. So Lisa Ann, we're all chilling. We're all sitting down, like, waiting for people to come in and everything. It's kind of, She got there relatively early before the big fight started. She looks at me and she goes, you want to do a shot? And I was like, yes, I want to do a shot. I was like, what do you want? And... She's like, I, I offered like Jaeger Bombs or something. It's like, no, I don't do it. It's like, she's like, I'll, I'll let's do a shot of Jameson. And I was like, wow, really, Jameson, Lisa Ann? And she's like, yeah, you should know by now. I like my, I like my things dark, and walked away. Savage, amazing, savage, unbelievable. No, All right, I... so let's let's move along. What else we got? We got uh, uh, uh... Mr. Fretz. This is a big one. Oh, the and, ultimate, ultimate debate. Is the hot dog a sandwich? Nope. I've never thought about it. Neither have I. But I'm going to say no. Let's see. You have a piece of bread that's sliced into two. You have a meat in the middle of this bread and then condiments surrounding this meat. Yeah, I was that's, just thinking that. So I think that it's sounds like the, the sandwich. That sounds like the ingredients of a sandwich. You can argue that it's one piece of bread, and it not is one two, piece of bread, and not two. But all right, well, if you get a hoagie, if you get a sub, if you get a hero, it doesn't need to be cut in half. 
This is although, true. Al- this although is true. He, all the hoagies and whatnot that I get or cut in half. So I know, but I'm I mean, horizontally, but not like down the middle. Yeah, but yeah, but that, that, it's no, two you, you individual pieces of one bread. You've got a point. He, so I'm gonna say yes. I think it is. I think it is a sandwich. I am. Sure. Go- I am going to say no. We should make, we should do a Patreon special of just this question. Oh, I love this. All right, all right, Dave. How do you define a sandwich? No, uh, I mean when I I think of bread on top, separate. For, I think bread on top and bread on bottom are separate, but when also I define a hot dog, bread isn't on top or on bottom. It's on the side. It's on the side and it's connected. So, so you we're... consider a hero not a sandwich. It, it, but all all my heroes are the, the bread is cut like the whenever I get a hero, it is cut. The bread's cut in half. It's not cut. It's not a V to one side. But it's also like, cut in the middle too. It's a V on one side and one half though. It's two no, V's. No, no, it, no. It's not. The top part of it is completely independent of the bottom part. They started off as one loaf of bread, but it's cut into two pieces of bread. That is a sandwich. I don't know about that. I mean, like a hoagie or a hero comes from like one roll of bread. Or like a lobster roll. Is a lobster? Well, that's that's a hot dog bun. <laughs> like uh, if you have like a um, like. I forget the name of it. Like the the the, the bun, the circular bun. It's not like it's a regular hot dog, like a hamburger bun. It's more of like a like a, a I forget what we call it in Boston. Never mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, see what you started, Mister Fretz. We'll, we'll we will we will bring back this debate at another time. We we demand pretzels, pretzels. It it just it just comes back to what you define as a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> That's like what do you define as a sport? When I tell people cheerleading isn't a sport, and hash, and by the way, cheerleading's not a sport. By it's definition, it's not be a sport. A sport implies offense, defense. By definition, cheerleading is not a sport. And well, you also, don't have defense in golf. Golf is a sport. Golf's not really a sport. Golf's a sport. Golf is not a sport. All right, that's a question for next month. <laughs> this is just implementing a question. Yep. Last question. Think, all right, think about this. How many things in the Olympics are actually sports? Not many. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> okay. Last question, which is probably going to be the hardest question. We're coming up on 40 minutes and shit here. Um, from hashtag Wade Cares. Um, uh, he goes, top five NXT superstars of all time. I'm not even going to tackle this one first, so it's up to you or you, Will, or Dave. Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, Ricochet and Adam Cole, baby. Wow, that's an interesting list. It's very interesting. I'm going to say Kevin Owens, uh, Shinsuke, uh, Finn. Mm hmm. Sasha. Ooh. And Asuka. Yeah, this is hard. I mean, for me, I'm thinking about this list and going pretty much on um, just NXT career alone. Yeah. That's what uh, I try to do. Asuka, Sasha, and solely on NXT career alone because you didn't get more NXT than this. Tyler Breeze. You know, okay. you fucking face Jushin Thunder Liger. Yeah. Um, Sami Zayn. And Finn Balor was probably the ultimate NXT guy. Yeah. I feel, it's hard to pick just five. I'd be more comfortable picking a top ten, but the now we're at the five is hard. And, like, Tyler Breeze is in there, like I said, based on NXT character alone and his NXT upbringing. Like, Tyler Breeze was a star in NXT. He was. Unfortunately, the gimmick just couldn't work on the main roster. Well, until he had fashion files, and then Fandango got fucking injured. Yeah. All right. So that wraps it up, Ricky. Take us home. Yeah. 
Yeah, folks, that wraps us up. This is the uh, first ever Axe of Kings Patreon special. Um, we are going to be um, debuting this live publicly for the first time ever. For all future episodes, please subscribe to our Patreon. And for just $1 a month, you may be able to get this and much more interesting conversations. Like, is a, like, is, is a hot dog really a sandwich? What does Dave def- what does Dave define as a strange bedfellow? Dave definitions is turning into one of my favorite games ever. Oh, my, I, I think that's a Patreon show. Nah, <laughs> I a hundred percent refuse to have that be a show. Okay, all right. there you go, canceled. Okay. I, I, I'm putting I'm putting in on my list of potential new Patreon shows. But yeah, folks, shout out to all our Patreon members for. Uh, for all you know obviously giving us money um and we'll be back with this segment in the uh, next couple of months see ya are you sure because dave definitions would be freaking awesome oh my god be so funny I, i'm I, I i am not i i'm telling you guys right now i am not fucking doing that we'll let you yeah. use a dictionary no I'm, I, <laughs> I'm just not i'm not fucking doing that so the the answer is no, so it's pointless to even continue the conversation. All right, Ricky, no. we can do it and hypothetically think what he would think they are. That's weird. <laughs> like that's 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 one that's also hard. Um, it's impossible. All right, I, I uh, what well, if you came up with like your own mind. language? Sorry, uh, I'm uh, quickly um, uh, exporting it to yeah, MP3. R- Ricky, make sure that you. Uh, End this call and then start another one. Mm. That's true. So let's end this call right now. Shout out to all of our Patreon people. Uh, hashtag Wade Cares. All that stuff. And we will uh, see you guys in a bit.